Are you looking for a place to meet like-minded people? Perhaps you're a light worker looking for a safe place to share your thoughts and services. We've got a place for you in tuatalks.com. Join for free, post updates, blogs, create and join groups via website or radio or class package. The possibilities are endless. Join the All Spiritual, All Under One Roof Network, www.intuitalks.com. Welcome, everybody, to another Psychic Affair. And for those that still aren't clear, I'll just clarify, because, you know, it's what I like to do, that uh, we're having alternate weeks roundabout. So on Wednesday, every second week, I'm co-hosting with Kathleen on this channel with Energy Therapy Show and at this time. So that's uh, Altered States. So if you see that buzzing around, you'll know that's us. And next week we're going to be talking about psychic uh, development. If you've got any questions about that, if you've got anything that is new or different or something's happening for you and you want to ask about it, uh, where you mean. Uh, for today uh, and every second week as, as the first and the third uh, week of the, the month, every Wednesday, 9.30, same everything else, a psychic affair runs where I run my projects, my stuff. Now because uh, Witches Britches is now finished, it's Conito, it's over, uh, we will be incorporating some of that material, uh, especially as Kathleen's very witchy oriented into some of our shows going forward. So we look forward to all of this kind of thing and of course we all know that I love doing the Aura show so we'll get there and get started. Um, if anybody's in line with Christy Faust, uh, do remind her she had specifically asked for a reading and yes she can check out the archives, Christy, but I'm quite sure she would have liked to have been here for this one. And a big boo to Brian Clover, who also, or Clover, who also said he wanted one but didn't send me a photo. I did think about chasing him up, but I'm going to tell you right here and now, I'm not chasing anybody up anytime. And speak of Christy, she must have known. She's like, here, bam, bam. So the reason the starter was because I mentioned last week in uh, Altered States about my aura camera in my shop. Uh, and here's the shop. This is what this picture is. And if you look to the right of the image over here, here, you can see that was my aura camera and that was where I did all the damage right there. Um, and I did a lot of shows with that camera and eventually decided that I was seeing more information than I was getting from the camera. And I found it actually over time to become more and more limiting. Are they good fun? Absolutely. Um, do they give you fairly accurate information? Absolutely, but they can't see behind colours. They can't see behind your back. They can't see if there's a bright colour in front. They can't see the colour behind it. So it has limitations, but they are awesome and they are good fun and everybody seems to like having one of those pictures. So I thought I'd explain how this came about. This is an early aura picture. You can even see it's scanned in in the old days, so it's not beautiful. Uh, but actually, that's me under all of that. So I want to clarify a couple of things about density of aura. Um, density isn't a great thing, but anybody that's really focused on something at, at any time is likely to have a lot of density in the aura. So this is me after doing 13 readings, might have been 14, 13 or 14 readings for the day. Now the interesting thing, this was at a show, I was at a psychic fair and it was just boom to boom to boom to boom to boom. Now if you have a look at the the little white bits, uh, I, I took a lot of photos of myself, friends around me as I was doing different things for the very reason I wanted to see what was happening, what was changing if anything and we already knew what my aura looked like, it was basically pink and blue and fairly clear. Uh, and so here what I did notice is all of these little white connections, we talk about making connections, uh, there are exactly the same number of these little white flares as I did readings that day. This photo would have been taken possibly around about um, about half an hour after I finished the readings. We took another photo an hour after I finished my day uh, and I was back to normal. But it did take that long which explains why you can be a little bit uh, do fra do fra fra, a little fru fru, a little do lally after you've had a day of readings and working energy and all that kind of thing. Um, really an interesting thing to talk to you up. There's, this here is a, a series of four. Now there's that first one so you can ignore that but what I wanted to show you was the three pictures that you're looking at with the red and them are the same person. So with the first picture I've got to tell you it was only a, a matter of uh, minutes. So we took the first picture, which was this bottom left one here. This one here where you can barely see through. The aura is very close to his head. 
uh, and it's very red. Obviously, it's very dense. <clears throat> that is a person who, no matter what you're really going to say, they're wrapped up in themselves, they're wrapped up in their feelings, they're wrapped up in their world. Um, so, so it's, 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 it, it shows you that's what it kind of looks like. They're hard to get to, hard to reach through. They won't see your perspective or your point. They won't feel what you're trying to share with them. So it's a bit like a brick wall energy. Um, there are times when people have that, and there are times when anybody can have that, by the way. Now, this picture here was taken about five minutes after this one. Now, this is important because during this one, I asked this person to think of sex. And even with all of that going on down there, but boom, straight away it was all on. You know, it was all happening and you can see the heart chakra coming on through. You can see the yellow pushing on through the red, the deep red. But what more important is you can see where approximately the headline is. It shoves this energy right on up. It, when you talk about sex or when he thought about sex, he wanted to be noticed pretty much. And so I actually adopted a term for this. I call it peacocking. Women, you know, will wander around and go, you know, I can really feel a connection with this guy. He really loves me. He's got strong feelings for me. I'm like, yeah, now nah, he's doing this. <laughs> and he will match anything you've got going to get the sex, just so as we're clear about that. You were just thinking about peacock. It's exactly what I call it, because if you can think about it, this is how women and men can get caught out a little bit. We've got here a fairly depressed and heavy energy, right? And then up here, if he's interested in you, you're going to see that. You're going to feel that. You're going to get the sensation of that. You're going to be even maybe overwhelmed by that. And the beauty of that is you're not going to realize, and this is when we go, these are his true colors right down here. It's a disappointing thing. He can only maintain this for so long. He can maintain it every time he sees you while he's seeing you once or twice a week. He can maintain it when he's happy with you and when he's happy with how everything's going. It's sort of a honeymoon energy, but not quite because he doesn't even know the person. <laughs> he's just in his mind, really. So that's okay. He could be thinking of the last magazine he looked at for a we know, you know. So he could he could be thinking about the last pair of boobies he got a glimpse of, you know, to get that kind of effect. And just so as we understand that, it may not be you, the person standing in front of him at the moment. So it's an interesting thing. Now, about five or six minutes after uh, I asked him to do that, I also put my hands on his shoulders and I gave him a little bit of energy and this is as good as it got. Now, we're only talking five minutes, but now for the first time you can see a face in there. There's a little bit of clarity. So when uh, when I'm sharing energy with people, when I'm giving energy therapy, when I'm doing hypnosis, I always run energy. When I'm doing readings, I always run energy. Part of the purpose is for a person to hear or see or gain a bit of clarity. And so this is what it does without any agenda at all, without any conversation about what's going on. Uh, he got a little bit of clarity there. He got a little bit of a look through his own energy. And that's what happens over here. He can't see through his own energy, can't see through his own thoughts, his own feelings. There is nobody getting through to him. There's nobody going to be close to him. It's just a boo. Now, also, his heart, which is clear in here, uh, is revealed. So he's sort of a golden-hearted kind of an individual, uh, quite possibly would do anything for many people. Having said that, um, he would hold himself distance. In other words, if he was in front of you and you said, can you help me with this, he'd always say yes, but having him in front of you would be a bit of a problem. Now, because it's so close to his body, and you can see it at the bottom corner here, it doesn't even stretch down to his feet. He'll feel quite isolated, quite disconnected. It's a red angry energy, whether we like to admit that or not, although he may not come across as being angry, he's the type of person that will go to anger first and once he gets there he won't let it go in other words he'll hold on to things and not let them go very interesting uh, thing to have a look at and to understand that people do this sort of stuff all the time now his main energy profile it doesn't matter what you would do for the most part of his life that would stay the same unless he went out of his way to find a way to do things differently Christy says, I would think that red would be associated with anger instead of love. Not necessarily, okay? So we've got that uh, intensity, the denseness of it. A uh, clear, bright red is passion and excitement. And that, when I see that around a person, they're a get-it-done kind of a person if it's there all the time. Uh, other people that are just all excited about something are going to flare red. Red isn't a bad color. It's the type of red. Just like pink isn't a good color, it's the type of pink. 
It's the depth of it. It's the density. Where is it on your face if it's on your face? Is it over your shoulders? Is it weighing you down? Is it light and airy? All of these things come into play, and any color can be good, and any color can actually have a damaging effect. And when you've got two colors at war with each other or not mixing and not mingling, then you get a split personality type of energy where the person can't make up their mind or they swing from one space to the next. Those two colors can look as lovely as you like, but if they're not working together, you've got a problem. Now, I also wanted to show you this. this these are all taken with my aura camera by me, except for this middle one. I point at the camera and you don't know what I'm pointing at. Because I'm in the picture, uh, I had a friend actually push the button. So on the left here, she came to me. Her name's Jack. She had just got out of hospital about a week and a half before her second trip into hospital uh, with uh, pneumonia. Now, she was a smoker. And she had initially come to me to give up smoking. And that's when I met her, really. She was also an energy worker. She did Reiki, and she did that professionally. She did readings, but she was more comfortable doing the, the, the healing work. Now, when she got her pneumonia uh, and she couldn't resolve it, she'd been in hospital twice. She was so angry with herself that she didn't actually step out to look for help. Now, this is what you're looking at over here. See all this red in behind that yellow? Uh, it, it was everywhere through her aura. And that was because she was angry at herself. She was angry at herself for being a smoker. She was angry at herself for not stopping years ago. She was angry at herself for a lot of, exactly, Christy who. That's why Valentine's Day is red, red, red. Uh, she was angry at herself for a lot of things. Now, here's the problem, regardless of the color. Can you see her face? No. Can you see her eyes? No. So nothing anybody says to her is going to get in. You can't see her ears. She's in her own world in there. I'm angry and I want to stay angry. Um, she will push people away. Uh, in this instance, she came to me instead. Five minutes after she sat down and I took that photo of her because I made everybody I could think of. I did take a photo of a man with a hangover. I will find it one day and show you because it wasn't pretty. <laughs> It was not pretty at all. Uh, and this is five minutes later, me standing there with my hands on her shoulders, just running energy into her. And five minutes later, see the clarity is the first thing that you notice about this. You can see this is her crown chakra. Quite often people look at that and they say, oh, that must be you behind her. And I'm like, no, her hands are on the plate. So I don't let anybody mis misinform you. If your hands aren't on the plate, uh, a very mild tinge of something might come up, but it's only because the camera's flashing those colors back at itself. Usually, if there's no, 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 no hands on the plate, you get nothing. And I've actually got a picture of myself with my hands on the plate with a very dull aura from channeling, which I will do in another show. It just gets all too hard to try and do them all and explain them all. Uh, but when I channeled, you're sort of giving away or letting go of your own energy there. So it's a bit of an interesting thing. You can see this comes down into her head. She was a good healer. She was good at what she did. Uh, she had years of experience, um, but she was angry because I'm a healer that can't heal myself. That's what she got angry about because she'd made poor decisions when it came to her health. And she's then saying, I'm a fraud. How can I advise other people if I can't even heal myself? That kind of thing's going on. So you can see this, this nice pink. Now I know that's running into her from my hand uh, and this greeny yellow color over here. A lot of people seem to think that green is a healing energy. No, it's not. It's just another one. If you put yellow and blue together, you will get green. End of story. And But you also have the components of yellow and you also have the component of blue. Um, green as a primary color is a function of light only. So it's an interesting thing to look at. But at the end of the day, if you've got an issue with something and you need it to be cooled, you'll go to, without even trying, those cool colors. And that's what she's done. She's now employing her beautiful big crown. And you can even see in here the shape of that top of that crown. That's all behind this energy. It's kind of phenomenal, isn't it? Uh, you can actually see here quite clearly in the two pictures, the line across her face is arched over. And that prevents her seeing, hearing, or even speaking what she needs to speak. So there's this period of time while my hands are on a poor, poor lady, only five minutes. <laughs> and that's how quickly it starts to affect a change. And when I'm doing energy therapy, when I'm doing hands-on work, when I'm reading the aura, I look forward and I see the change and I see how long, it's gonna, how long it's gonna take, whether a person's gonna feel worse before they start feeling better, what part of their body is likely to react the most and what they may need to work on going forward. Now, five minutes after that, 
I took this picture and then I did take the poor darling and give her a full energy therapy just so as you know I didn't leave her hanging just so I could get my photos and make her suffer. Now with this one you can see that the red's gone which is the primary thing right there. When a person's angry no matter whether they're physically ill or not getting through anger is probably the single biggest challenge you could possibly have. I didn't say a word to her till that red was gone. If I tried to speak to her or advise her she would have been dismissing everything that I said. Now she's still heavily over the top here, heavily thinking. A little bit of that is her nature and, and analysis nature, a thinker, overthinking. Um, when she did come to me for meditations and hypnotherapy, she also joined in for uh, a vibration expansion technique training because she felt that she didn't know enough, <laughs> partly because of this, so she did join in on that. One of the interesting things about her was, and this is what this is evidence of here, she would go back to that configuration regularly when she hit a wall, when something got difficult she would say I've got to go back to the beginning now if you notice my hand I've got to go back to the beginning that's exactly what happens in front of her face she would say it like that she'd say oh you know I've missed something I've just got to start again I've got to go back to the beginning and she was forever going back to the beginning and not necessarily advancing because she'd get back to the block she'd get back to the place where she was challenged and then she would struggle again so really interesting stuff um that's a few years old now. Now, chakras, I just want to quickly glance by these. You know, when I do chakra readings, they're very specific to body parts. Um, these, these, these are, yes, you can usually find them um, in a show. These, this is mine, though. I've created this. So we've gone past the photos. Uh, and as I said, I moved past taking the photos because um, they were kind of limiting. And as you already know, if you've been following my shows, I tend to give out a lot of information fairly quickly. I found after a while that I was giving more information than was on the photos, and that confused people as well. So I'd see purple, and they wouldn't see it in the photo. I'd actually say that you see this purple here, and I'd be pointing to it on the photo, and they'd say, no, <laughs> I don't see that. And so it, it was limiting because you couldn't really talk about what wasn't in the photo uh, and, and sound sensible. So eventually uh, I got rid of the camera, I sold it on, and I started developing the technique for doing my own aura pictures. Now, this is a lot of years ago, so it was very primitive. I would just do it on paper, so it looked nothing like the photos and not as good, but the information was so much more. Uh, I could also do timelines, and that was a big deal for me at the time. Still is, timelines, looking forward. Uh, and I could break down to chakra readings. Now, chakra readings, chakras are there with uh, whether a person's developed them or not, you can see them no matter what. Well, a camera can only pick them up if they're rather large, if they're rather out there. Now, a large singular chakra isn't a great thing to have. It's a little bit of an imbalance. But yes, um, what you're looking for is the Coggins camera. Um, there are a lot of... Um, there are a lot of video cameras and photos that are set up with computers now. They aren't a patch. Honestly, the pictures are nothing. They're manipulated but they aren't a patch on the Coggins 6000. Take that into your brain, the Coggins 6000. And always ask if you're going to get a photo taken if they use Fuji film. Now, Fuji film processes millions of more color than Polaroid film. So when you're taking those photos, it costs more per person for the person taking the photo. So a lot of them do the cheapy thing and go to the Polaroid. Now, as soon as you see the two photos together, you'll see the difference. There's the, the variety of color with the Fuji. Um, and, of course, the Polaroid loses color. So it'll show white anywhere it can't discern a color. So there were a lot of people running around saying they were pure because the photo was showing up white. And the photographers didn't know how to see aura or didn't read aura. So they would just read it as this is purity. And it's like crazy stuff. So as it stands... Uh, you're looking for a person who's got the Coggins 6000 camera, which is the latest one they have, uh, and ask them, are you using Fujifilm? And if they are using Fujifilm, go for it. You'll end up with a beautiful, fantastic coloured photo. They're not usually cheap, but it's, you know, something you do as a treat anyway. Um, so that's the, the chakra photos for those that want uh, chakra readings. These are how I show them, and they're broken right down. And I have boy pictures. <laughs> I don't just have girl pictures, but I have boy pictures. And um, when I had my aura class, I was running the slides through, and all of the girls got all excited because the, the, the boy picture had an erection, <laughs> which was a really sad thing. He had an erection. Coggins, C-O-G-G-I-N-S, Coggins camera. He's the one who developed the camera um, and 
the Coggins is, to my knowledge, the latest evolution before you get to the computerized ones where the camera is plugged into the computer and it's just a little thing. It takes your photo, but the printouts are all limited to what a printer can do. And trust me, it can't do what film can do. Um, C-O-G-G-I-N-S for the Coggins camera. And you're looking for the Coggins 6000 or later. 6000 or later. Um, so there we go. The next picture we're going to look at here are just a couple. I'm not going to read them for you. That's it. You got it. Well done. I'm not going to read them for you. I've got some people here who will have their photos read. But this is to show you they can be very, very different. This is our lovely Sherry. A lot of you may know a beautiful lady um, from from shows. Uh, that's her or a photo that I'm kindly allowed to use. And Tasha, who lives here locally, uh, and hers. And you can see they're wildly different. And so um, the reason I've shown those is because a lot of people say, well, aren't they all going to be about the same? Well, actually, aside from colour, the configurations are different, and the fact is that shades, depth, continuity, I mean, it, it's hugely different um, from person to person. Uh, men's photos, now, I want us to take a moment. I know it's an upbeat show usually, but I want us to take a moment to share a thought for Roger, who's on the left here. There's beautiful aura. While we're all sticky beaking at his aura, we can actually, it's a great way to connect with him and to send him some energy because we all know he's going through some trials right now, and his lovely Kathy, his wife, and his son, Eric, and other members of his family. So I just wanted to put that in there to show you that he's, he's had a beautiful energy or got a beautiful energy and we could send him uh, some energy and some love, I would say. You know those boys. Well, I don't know if you know Damon. Do you know Damon? He's a New Zealander. He's down in Christchurch, um, this guy here. And I want you to take the time to have a little wee look uh, at Damon and uh, decide what you might know about him from his aura. We'll come back to that later. But just have a look. Look at the colours he's emitting. Look at how they're coming out. I want you to notice too from earlier how clear the faces are on these guys. You know, you can see very clearly through their faces, which means they also have a very clear idea of the world. Um, they will be clear on what they like, what they don't like, what they know, what they don't like, uh, don't know, that sort of a thing. So that's how an aura should look regardless of the colours. Uh, the colours are only a part of a whole. There's also how they're put together. And this is what a timeline looks like. Now, um, when I do them live, I usually just do the picture. They can't really move and look great. Um, the second one does look dimmer, but that's just the colour um, of the actual photo itself. So when a person sends me a photo, uh, that all counts, by the way. And there's a point where the colours are right, like the, the aura colours are right, and by me mucking around with the background, which I do, um, would only make them wrong, if that makes sense. So that's just a matter of lighting. Um, you can see I've actually taken out a lot of what was behind him here, this window here. There was a lot of stuff going on. He had a light behind his head, so I had to sort of get rid of them. Um, but that's, that's what it is. It's more about those individual colours. Uh, usually the less going on around a person, the better. Plenty of room above the head, uh, down to their sternum is the perfect place for an average uh, aura photo. Um, this is an aura photo going forward, a timeline. Never looks as pretty because it's, it's, it's not getting its natural flow, but it gives us anything up to just over two years or around two years it can read. If it's done by email, I type it all out, type it over the picture, and boom, boom, it's done. You can always click Get a Reading with Dorothy, go to uh, energytherapies.intruetalks.com or you can go to energytherapies.co, either or will get you the job done. Now, I had to include these pets. The one on the left, the little cheeky thing on the left is uh, Alicia DePietro's, I think I said that right, her puppy dog. Uh, I read him in a show uh, earlier. I did pet readings on here. Uh, and I did that. Um, he, he was just a delight to do. And Jennifer, that's Jennifer's cat. Jennifer's cat. I'm not sure. Is it Jennifer's journey's cat? Is it yours, JJ? Or was that Jennifer Young? I can't remember now. Or Jen Young. Or was it Jennifer? Was it Jennifer Satori? <laughs> Jennifer uh, Adam. I can't remember. But I did these these pets, and it, no no cat for you. So I can't remember. So it might have been um, Jennifer, as in Satori, who runs in True Talks. I can't quite remember now because I just put Jennifer's cat. But um, animals come across really, really well. You can get to know them. And if you're thinking of buying an animal or it's a substantial purchase or a horse, I do a lot of horse work for that reason, um, you can have, get a look at it first so that you know what you're getting 100%. Look who we've got. woo -hoo! Christy Faust. There she is. Um, quite a... 
that's me, she says. That's me. Isn't that lovely? Now, I just want everybody to know that the print that you see off to the right of her head, left, right of the picture is the left of her head, uh, is print on her wall. It's not part of her aura. But if you want to see her in motion, go click on that, and you'll be able to see uh, the moving aura. Uh, and you can save it or do what you like or share it from there if you want, Christy, and I will send you the picture so you can do what you like with it as well. Uh, thank you so much for letting me play. I love it. I love it. So now we're down to aura readings, and this is how I start. I create, I take your photo, I put the colors around it, uh, and then I start reading it. If I can't see a color and it's important, to, to put in there, I will bring it forward. That is to say if it's behind the person's back and wouldn't come into a photo normally, I will bring it forward just so that we can have it there if it's important. But what I like here is, see this, we'll start with this big ring of blue at the top here. Not an uncommon thing to see with people that are into spirituality, this blue, the crown chakra is developed, but it does swing off to the right of your body. The left of the photo is the right of your body. So it does swing off to the right there a little bit. So that's always trying to either validate or qualify information, not necessarily just trusting it. Nothing wrong with that. But it may also prevent the, uh, the, the um, taking in of emotional information at times when you're trying to organize things in your mind, when you're trying to work out how, that, how this fits with that. And that's not just about spirituality. Our upper crown is how we experience life. All of our chakras, all of our energy is about how we, uh, how we, how we visit life, how we experience it. Um, I did hear a reader, I can't remember who it was, fairly recently saying that the aura was part of your soul. It is not. It is, it is part of your body. It is part of your body. It comes from your cells. It's proven to come from your cells. The very center of your cell is a light, and it pulses. Uh, we actually have two pulsing like this, okay? Only multiply the speed of that. It travels out of your body at the speed of light, which is 186,000 miles per second, pretty damn fast. And that's how I can read it from here, even if you're 18,000 kilometers away. The very fact that you're only 18,000 kilometers away means that I can get information from you and vice versa if you're focused on me. How do I do that is instead of trying to target, I've got Christy there. I don't actually need a photo. I do readings way without photos and even without names. But what I do there is I pretty much just ignore everything else is how I do it. It's, it's not so much that I focus on Christy. I've got Christy in my mind. Uh, in this case, I have her photo, and then I just ignore every other piece of information around me so that it's only the information coming from her. So that's the best description I've got of how I read and see Aura. Um, I learned to see it. I wasn't born with it. I didn't grow up with it. Um, it, it actually came to me because I bought the camera. I, I will not tell a lie. Uh, when I first got the camera, I could not see Aura at all. I relied totally on their Aura information, which I now know to be very, very limited. Uh, and I know, like most readers, we all relied on that. That was all you were getting. It was printed off on the on the card. And any information that was given, we had a guy uh, that used to do it for years, Dean Leckie, and I had seen him with his camera a number of times at shows. And the first thing I could say about that was he wasn't ever reading the aura. He did nice readings, but they would be um, readings about, it, um, you know, uh, your, your, your guides, uh, your, your, your past person lost, <laughs> somebody who's passed away. They weren't actually, it was mediumship or guide readings, clairvoyance. They weren't actually aura readings. He wouldn't do anything with aura at all. So it's kind of interesting, and you do see that a lot. So this became like a big deal for me because I'd had an interest from the start. The very first um, reading I had was clairvoyant. But when I got back to New Zealand, I did find a lady accidentally who did aura readings, and she sat there with her back to me. I would have been just, just over 40, just learning this stuff. She sat with her back to me, and then she came uh, and did her, did her piece of paper thing, put the colors on, and then she gave it to me. It was all very remote. It was very difficult. And I, could, I, I didn't know at the time, but I do realize now that what she, why she turned her back to me was she couldn't do it with, without being completely focused on her piece of paper uh, and just saying the colors. It was the most accurate reading I'd ever had in my life, by the way. So I hadn't had a lot of readings by then, but I can say to this day and after listening to many readers, it was still the most accurate reading I've ever experienced. Now, the, the interesting thing about that is that the aura is something you take with you. 
Um, most people who read energy or are clairvoyant are reading your aura at some level in some way. Uh, to dismiss it, though, is rather foolish because it denies you information. And the reason I say that is the person with the most information about you is you. And if I'm going anywhere else to get it, when I first started readings, I had guides. If you're going anywhere else to get it, it it's not complete. It can't be complete. And then you've got to interpret it as a human being. And so as a human being, you are perfectly placed to interpret another person's energy. I'm spitting everywhere. It's my favorite subject. <laughs> All right, back to Christy. Uh, thank you, Darlene. I appreciate that. Now, because we've got these roving lights uh, wandering around over the head, sometimes it could make you a bit scatterbrained, I would say. And I don't mean that in any negative way, but, you know, it's what happens when we're up there. Uh, there's that tendency to sort of lose information and then it could take a little while, a few circuits like orbit uh, to, to grab that information back down again. It's fairly well developed, which I'm impressed with. And so it suggests too that you can get information without too much difficulty. And I would say, correct me if I'm wrong, and I know you will, that you do go to shows or when you do go to places like that, you are more or less very able to see where they're winging it, where they're not right, where they're not correct, where they're making it up, <laughs> all of those kind of things. Uh, and if you need to sort of focus, I guess, on um, uh, whether you've got the correct information or not, like you may not or you may say or you may not say, but you'll be doing the readings basically along with the person who's supposedly being paid or the professional or whatever. So I find that really good fun for you, Christy. Uh, and with that, you are discerning whether they actually know what they're doing or not. Pretty much, I think you're on a par with most of them by the looks of this, I would say so. Now, this wonderful little yellowy green here. Now, this green here, just so as we get that, and this green down your right arm and these little splotches in your chest area uh, and around your throat, very detail-oriented. The details sometimes might overwhelm you. That, that getting every little detail correctly, uh, correct or whatever, could get you mixed up sometimes when a, a broader view. And that's that's not spirituality necessarily, but it will it will cross over into that. Accuracy is important for you, uh, but wanting every little detail, you could read the whole manual when you might have found what you needed in a paragraph kind of a thing. By the time you get to the end of the manual, <clears throat> you've forgotten the bit that you read in the paragraph, which might again make you feel a little absent-minded, but in actual fact, it's really just trying not to miss things perhaps or trying to make sure you know exactly where you're at before you get started. Uh, so I find that a bit of a fun energy. But it's picked up with the yellow in the middle up here, and that's important. So the yellow can turn a little mustardy, which is anxiety, a bit of anxiety in there. But while it's nice and bright, that's you have, just having fun with things. you know. So sometimes I think you just like to have fun with things, and uh, other people might take you a little bit too seriously. I've got, I've got a feeling we've got a, a party animal hiding behind uh, Christy F's name there. Now, we've got this indigo blue at your third eye, and it's surrounded by an amazing cerise orange, which is way up the corner here. So you can see it up to the what is your left side, the right of the picture, and these two are connected. There was no way to make that look pretty. It would have looked ridiculous, but they are connected. And it comes all across this right eye of yours and down into your third eye area. Now, I've put this up here because it's high, but in actual fact, the third eye does sit a little bit lower. So the main energy of your third eye is the cerise energy. Uh, while you're happy to give people the benefit of the doubt, you trust your doubts. Very much so, you trust your doubts. Cerise is a color of knowing, not guessing. And so you don't like to do something before you're sure, but you usually know well before you've got proof, if that makes sense. And so by the time you do take any kind of action on anything, you are really more proving you're right I guess, rather than hoping you're right. Um, this is an interesting energy. Indigo, as we all know, radiates to lapis lazuli. Uh, it's the color of the intuit, if you like. Um, some people do deliberately carry this, but you don't have to have indigo to be intuitive. I thought I'd be very clear there. There's no such thing uh, as a color that is intuitive. A person is intuitive, not the color. Uh, but clearly, um, this is the color that looks for insight. That means I want to know what's inside something. I want to know what causes something. I want to know how that works. Explain it to me. And I'm quite sure that half the time, if not more, when you ask for something to be explained to you, it isn't because you need them to explain it to you. You're quite capable of finding out for yourself. But you want to know if they know what they're talking about. Correct? Nod your head. <laughs> I have no doubts about that at all. <laughs> 
at all. So anytime she's asking me questions, people, we're looking for a trap. So now we've got this pink, and it is quite a strong pink to the, the, the left side of your head, the right side of the picture, and it runs down your head. Money is something you think about possibly quite a bit. I don't know that you're worried about it. Um, a solid pink of this nature, by the way, is usually about money. It's about accumulating. It's about wages. It's about apportioning it. It's about budgeting. Uh, it can be money, money worries or woes. Um, it can be money, worries, or woes, but isn't necessarily. It's really just that word money. Um, planning, thinking things out, maybe the person that spends a lot of time thinking how their resources are going to be used or whether they've done that right. And it can turn into worry. There's no doubt about it. It can become very deep and very concerned as a colour. Uh, it doesn't reflect in a person whether they have money or don't have money, just that it's a fairly major priority when it's of that nature. Now, it's also got the purple or the violet, which is down on the shoulder, running into the eye. Now, as you see that running into the eye, we've got an accepting nature. We've got a nature here that is... Again, because it's the left eye and it's the intuitive eye, it's sort of like, well, even if you don't know what you're doing, I like you. Or even if you don't know what you're saying, I like you. Or, or, or I don't. So you'll accept things about a person you like that um, others might dismiss or might not like. And you'll just go, well, they've got all these good points. So it's quite an accepting energy. It's quite a nice energy. Uh, you'll see things the way you want to see them rather than the way others expect you to see them or the way they think you should. You're not necessarily going to take sides in any situation. Uh, you just want to know what you want to know and you want to do what you want to do. Um, it's not so much an independent energy. It's really just, well, it's my life. It's my friendships. It's my choices. Um, I'm sorry you don't get along or I'm sorry that's happening for you but you know um, if you keep trying to push me I may not like you kind of an energy so you wouldn't even like people trying to get you to take sides into the jaw here we have this a limey yellow it's reflected from up here it's a lot softer here you can see there's a difference between a, a clear translucent color and this is a little more clouded so while you aren't necessarily buying into the idea that you need to be positive all the time you do try to speak with a positive spin most of the time, or you do want to, you never want to appear to be aggressive. Uh, you probably sit back, wait, and then say a few words of encouragement if it's necessary, but you're not going to jump on the prayer bandwagon just for the hell of it either. Um, well, we've got this blue pushing, this indigo reflected into the other side. So there's that, you know, I know what I need to say. I don't need to say things just to appear spiritual, that kind of thing. I don't need to. I, I'm, you're not really, what's the word, you're not really manic about making friends as such. You don't feel that need to buy into a collective consciousness just for the sake of appearing for people you don't even know, like you have a spiritual nature or you're their kind of person or that you agree with them, those kind of things. Uh, you're more likely to say nothing if you don't agree or what I am now already seeing will be a Christy trick. <laughs> you will ask a question. Uh, and then that will put, push the energy back to them so that they have to answer the question, so they have to put themselves on the line uh, rather than you doing that. Now, we've got this very bright portal here. Uh, this is your right side. Okay, so this is very much the, the side we do. This is the energy of being uh, interested in the past. That's past lives. That's dreams, your own past. Because it's singled out you can see it's a little unusual here actually it's singled out it's almost a triangulated ball of energy see there's the three balls and they came to quite a literally a head like this uh, almost like a, a soft pyramid energy so the past uh, anything to do with history um, anything to do with past lives again not all energy in fact most of it isn't about your spirituality but the things that we are interested in tend to find their way into all of the areas that we are Keen, the things that we follow. So it's quite a nice uh, and interesting aspect. So that is you radiating to, it would catch your attention in the position it's in. You'll hear it out the corner of your ear. You'll see it out the corner of your eye. So you'll notice anything along those lines a lot before you'd notice the other things. Uh, very, very interested. Now coming down the right shoulder and the right arm, this is that detail orientation. Now we have a sage green around it. And this is in your throat as well. We've got the dark green, which is your details. Uh, when you when you talk, you, you just said you're introverted. And of course, when you talk about being introverted, sometimes it's really just not wanting to make mistakes because there's so much detail energy here that I would say you really hate making mistakes. And you probably aren't keen on showing people that you could make a mistake or that you did make a mistake. So you don't like being judged. Um, for what you did or didn't do, it, it, you know, unlike me, blah, <laughs> 
you would rather that would be something that you held to yourself, you didn't need to share it, that kind of thing. So you would be very sure of yourself before you did place something out in the public arena. Uh, you don't really like that idea of people being able to inspect your abilities or something you said in such a way that becomes an issue. So you might push out to get those details from other people as well. So I find that quite interesting. You'll give me those details. I want to see them. Now, slipping away and down towards your heart, this, this is a beautiful clear purple. Um, it, it's coming from a better place. Now, I'm always very careful when I say this because it is a superior energy. It's purple, that's why they use it for royalty. Um, it's a, 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 and bishops and the like. It's a superior energy. It's a knowledge that's born of experience. It's a knowledge born of training. It's something you bring to the table because of what you know. And it is superior. It doesn't mean it's other people are inferior. So, so, so we're clear. Um, I mentioned this word superior to somebody a, a few weeks back and I could feel them going, eh, horrible, horrible word. We need to listen to what words actually mean. Something is better than something else or it isn't better than something else or it comes from the right place or it doesn't come from the right place. Superior energy comes from the right place. It veers off to your right. So you try to put that energy into everything you do. It's not so much that it's passionate because it really isn't. It's more that, you know, I only really want to spend my time doing the things that I, I feel strongly about, the things that I love, the things that I'm interested in. I don't really want to spend my time or waste my time doing anything else. But it comes from experience. I've wasted my time in the past. I've learned about love in the past. Whatever the area that you're talking about or thinking about or interested in, uh, the energy that you put into something will always come from this place. And it's not coming from here, which is your upper upper bronchial tree, by the way, which may have caused you issues through the past. <laughs> If it still doesn't, it's fairly clear energy. Um, it may have caused your issues in the past, and I say that because it's a direct line, but it's just above the heart chakra. Uh, and then it drops down to a very dark, deep, deep color over the heart chakra. So you don't want people to know how you feel. Uh, it's almost a black, it's velvety over your heart chakra, and we just miss it here, but you can see how it drops away to a very dark color. Um, it's not just a forgotten bit. So black's used by people. It's not an accident. It's used to stop people knowing who you are, it's used to maintain some privacy, it's used to not be noticed. Because it's isolated to your heart area, it's usually about feelings, it's about I don't need people to know how I feel, they can know what I'm interested in, they can know what I like and don't like, but how I feel is, is my stuff. But it's also an absorbing energy, so you would feel things from the heart. If somebody's genuine and they're struggling, you would feel that in quite an empathetic way, uh, straight into your heart, like... <clears throat> when somebody is suffering uh, genuinely, uh, just as your heart would go out to people. You choose whether you open that door or not, though, and I'd say that you choose very carefully. It takes you a while to decide whether you're going to or not. Um, and uh, I think that's us for now. I hope you enjoyed that. Um, I could go on and on and on and on, you know, but I think that's enough for a public show and all the rest of it. And that's the main points that we've got that I've illustrated with the colour. So I do hope you enjoyed it. It is fun, isn't it? Now, I will make sure you get that picture. I'll send it to you PM on Facebook so you can plonk it wherever you like. Um, I hope you hit, did you hit the link to the YouTube video because it actually moves there. So um, they do look nice and moving in my opinion, but yes, you can't necessarily um, just sit and stare at it. Uh, for ages, and we have Mags, Woo! it's Mags, <laughs> I didn't have time to make this, this is my late one today, I didn't have time to make this move unfortunately, but here we go, uh, uh, look at her, uh, everybody else is going to say it's beautiful just to piss you off, now this is the most amazing thing here, up here see that it's a, a turquoise, uh, and with turquoise, it's very much a very uh, centered energy, but it's an energy that's centered on healing. Um, the check is in the mail. The, 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 the energy, you see we've got, now I wanted these to be brighter, but they really weren't brighter. So I thought, all right, I'll leave them as they are. Uh, these little dots are wanting to become little sparkly stars. Maybe it's because you don't like sparklies. I don't know. 
but they want to be sparkly stars and they didn't quite make it into sparkly stars, but they're two beautiful colours. When you've got these colours working together and they're coming directly into your left brain, so I should do it the side, the right of the picture, uh, we've got the energy of just being open to whatever a person can take in with regard to the past, with regard to healing, in particular healing. Um, there's a flow to this energy, so it can be fairly... Um, thank you. Good night, darling. So it can be um, uh, your own healing or wanting healing for others, those around you, wanting to make things all right. It's that kind of an energy. Uh, it has got a qualifier straight in here. These three red dots and the slightly darker, uh, I'll talk about those in a minute. But this this, this uh, ultraviolet is, is really lovely. Uh, it's more of a lavender color, and lavender is always about astringent love. <laughs> oh, I thought I'd have to say that out loud. Um, it's astringent love, and that is where, you know, for your own good would be a thing that you would say a lot. <laughs> Um, and, and it's and, it, and I could probably get the finger out there too. There's that for your own good energy. It's when somebody's sick. It's awful sounding to say you're at your happiest because you're not, but you love caring for people when they're not well. It sort of makes you feel very enriched within yourself um, and assisting them through stuff. You would take it personally if they didn't heal fast. Whether it's a cold we're talking about, whether it's emotional, um, it's really a, a, a really nice energy. So those two together, uh, the astringent love and the, the healing flow of turquoise, uh, which has a past element in it as well, um, are really rocking energies. Now, you can get brassed off with people. It's very specific. These are dots, right? These are your most well-exercised dots, and that means that there are what you call sensitivities or tender points. You might want to look at those <laughs> because they are so well-developed in your aura, anybody can find them. And I might be able to put it on picture and I might be able to see them and you can think to yourself, everybody, well, that doesn't mean anybody can. Actually, it means everybody can. Uh, the only difference between me and everybody else is I know what I'm looking at and I would try not to poke those. <laughs> but somebody else who can't see them but senses that they're there will stumble into them every time. And for somebody that's a little bit selfish or is into a cyclic type of energy, they will find that dead on target, ba-boom, 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 every single time, one of those. Now, we've got a couple of very half-developed ones, so you might sort of get taken out by those now and again, but those three definitely need to look at. Um, there'll be three areas of your life. There'll be three criticisms. There'll be a type of phraseology. There'll be a tone of voice that you're sensitive to, and you might jump out there before something develops so that you look like the bad guy when you're not really. So I thought I'd bring that to your attention and the rest of the world. It's just between us, right? <laughs> now, this color here, this beautiful orange, it's very muted orange. It's got a lot of brown in it. Um, I love this color here for you, and I can promise you it's a spinning wheel like this. And I tried to get that effect on it, but not so easy. But that's what it is. It's a spinning wheel going round and round and round, and it's doing it at about the speed of my hand here. It's not fast, and it's creativity, and it just piles out. It takes over your ear, it takes over your jaw, it takes over your throat, it takes over your eye. Now, this little light here is reflected from it. I left that in there or put it in there because I wanted you to see that actually there's a bit of lilac coming from there. There's that connection, and this here, you can just see it's piling in there too. So you're either going to be running fully intuitively or you'll be going to be running um, creatively, or you'll use your intuition to be creative or you use your creativity to be intuition, intuitive. And those are work like the, the three big things for you with your left brain or your right brain, really, your left side. And so that's where artistry comes in, but it's also how you speak to people, how you feel things, how you interact with your world. What you see is beautiful and what you don't. Um, you will most times probably look for something good within a structure that isn't so good, uh, whether that's a personality or whether that's a landscape, you'll spot the thing in the landscape that looks the best. Uh, we've got a very individual energy running off the right side of your head, that blue, oh, royal blue. It even almost looks like a crown. <laughs> and we've got these little spots. Now, I, you can only see the reflection of the one up here, but they, they do go down. And it is slightly fallen over to the side, should we say it, a fallen halo kind of energy. But in actual fact, it's about focus for you. You really can't do both at the same time. You know, I'm either independent, out here, doing things the way I want to, or I'm being creative, uh, I'm being intuitive. There's, for whatever reason, you can't 
quite bring those two together. And so it's very much a swinging energy. You'll find a, uh, you need a place, a position, a time to, to exercise the one uh, and the other one can enrode it, I suppose. It's a day-to-day -day life thing. But these wonderful little optimistic yellow sprays, there's very much, I just want, when I look at that, all I want to say are the words, oh, well, hopefully it'll work out okay because that's all I can do. Oh, well, never mind. <laughs> I want those things. That's what these little yellow lights are, these little golden lights. They're all like, you know, we can only do so much. There's a very intrinsic understanding that once you put all your effort into something, once you've tried as hard as you can, there's nothing more you can do. And the interesting thing for you is that at this stage, looking at this, you would push for that, trying as hard as you can. You'd push for it in others, which might make you demanding at times, but for their good. You see, it's for your own good. <laughs> I keep coming back to that on the other side. For your own good. And so as we're looking at that, you, you, you understand very much deep inside yourself that when a person's put their very best effort into something, and it's an intellectual understanding for you, when they put their very best into something, that even if it doesn't work out, they will feel better than if they didn't try hard enough and it didn't work out, even if it was the same level they ended up at. So you've, you've learned that for yourself. It's something you bring to the world. It's your gift, if you like, for others that the more effort you put into something, the more satisfaction you get out of something, the more you appreciate the results. Uh, you don't believe in half jobs. Do it right or don't do it at all, but don't pretend you're doing it right. Things that annoy you, see? We've got this irritable energy up here. <laughs> Why are the things that would annoy you would be a person giving half-assed effort and not really trying uh, the way that they should. Um, so you might sort of jump jump at that. Now the one thing about orange, and you've got a fair whack of it in here and it's around your throat and your shoulder, orange is the colour of irritability so I thought I'd say that um, the red dives into there and it will always do that when we're not being creative, when we feel restricted, it's a colour that doesn't like restriction, it wants freedom of expression, wants to be able to do and say what it likes uh, but the world doesn't let people be creative in that way. Um, those that want to sort of subjugate society, go and get stoned forever and die young or whatever, they become not so much rebellious because rebellion to me is constructive, um, but they become um, obscure, obscu obscu I can't even say it, obscu you know, so they, they, they become um, self-obsessed. They become so into what they want that what no, nobody else matters anymore and you would never allow that to happen to yourself. But orange always has that element to it. So when the creativity is not being expressed, when it's not being shared, uh, then of course we hit the bottom of the barrel and we get irritable and that's the best I've got for it. So the average person that's running a lot of creative energy, irritability, not short-tempered uh, necessarily, although it could go that way. It's more about that word getting grumpy being irritable when, you know, you can't find the time to just be yourself or just express. So that's that. I've got a cutaway. I've just got to be on my own. And then I just want to draw. I just want to photograph. I just want to write. I just want to do these things. Leave me alone, everybody. That's that kind of energy that this, this beautiful cerise, uh, sorry, this beautiful orange with the brown turns into. Now it gets browner as I look down your body. Very practical energy. Do things do them, get them done, I've got these many jobs, you probably plan, plan, plan because you've got a lot of brown in there, you don't like wasting your time. Now we've got this green, it's a very grass green, very bright green, uh, that's a colour, it is harmony, liking harmony, needing harmony, it's reflected into your throat, wanting to give harmony to others. Uh, and then it gets into just under the jawline here, which is the right jaw for you. It gets a little bit darker, and that's where you could get a bit pedantic about details. Uh, and it will come out your mouth, whether you like it or not. Somebody said something wrong, they've spelt something wrong, they've missed a bit that they were supposed to do. Sometimes it's instructional. Other times it's just because you notice it, Miss Hawkeye, um, because it's, it's, it's associated with that eye, you see. Ba-boom, that right eye, which is very practical. It's very detailed. Now, it's not a massive amount of deep, dark green, but it is there. And that means when it flares up, uh, you could get maybe persnickety. But actually, it's a good energy for somebody who is a teacher. It's a good energy for somebody who is a proofreader, that kind of thing, a person who edits other people's work, is a person required to find detail. So I'd say this becomes more prominent when you're doing that kind of thing. Uh, but now and again, it might find its way into other areas of its life. But I can actually see you 
with this energy catching yourself if it gets too much. You know, if you say, oh, my God, I've been harping on and on and on, it's time to stop that. So you do self-monitor. You know how to self-monitor, and that's the sage green here. It's wisdom, and it's wisdom. It's reflected up here. It's a little bit in the throat and in yellow, looking for constructivity rather than criticism, looking for um, assisted editing or assisted education, uh, while correcting others, you know, I want to put this in the right bracket. While it could get out of hand at time, it has a really strong purpose and we value people who can look at our work and tell us honestly what we need to know about it, what needs to be fixed or do the fixing. Uh, we have these people proofreading books uh, and doing a lot of work and, and watching stuff. We have these people checking over our artwork to make sure we didn't miss something. We have these people check, training other people on how to clean houses, how to be nurses, those teachers doing all those works are the ones that are actually adept and looking for detail because them looking for detail helps another person learn about detail, helps them to learn about the full range of something. You can look at something in front of you and you can see the missing bits almost like a pattern. Your eyes go straight to them. Um, so quite a good energy there for that and a lot of fun. Uh, Brian is in trouble. Brian is in trouble. <laughs> Brian's here. Welcome, Brian. Um, so that's what we've got going on there for you, Miss Mags, and we've just sort of made it to just before the end of the show there. I whipped this one in at the end, so I didn't get a chance to make a move, but I will send it to you, uh, PM it to you, so that because you were going to give me a photo. Da 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 da. Your wife was going to take the picture, fall over laughing. Remember the conversation. <laughs> And there we go. You're not really in trouble. Meg stepped into the into the base there, and she gave me a second photo so that we could get that all done. And now that's the end of our show. Nearly at the very end of our show, we must let you know that nobody was deliberately harmed in the making of this show. <laughs> Uh -huh. But you did get to me an hour and a half before the end of the show, uh, before the beginning of the show, which left me enough time to throw it on in there. So there we go. There was two. Nobody was injured. So I want to thank you very much for coming, everybody. Thank you for showing you. Next week it's Altered States with Kathleen White, medium, medium, medium Kathleen White, psychic medium. That's oh, too much to say. With Kathleen White, we are going to look at psychic development. We're going to talk about the rubbish that people tell you is part of psychic development. We're going to talk about shadow people. We're going to talk about visions. We're going to talk about how you get information, how it comes to you, and how that differs from person to person. We're going to talk about detail. We're going to talk about hearing voices. We're going to talk about empathy. We're going to talk about all of that. And if you have been developing skills, if you want to learn more about what you've discovered, write it down, bring it along, and ask us a question. You can call in or you can ask in the chat. You know I don't mind either way. We're all very much happy. They're only an hour show, so the most efficient way to do it is to be prepared. Thanks very much, everybody. Welcome and goodbye there, Amy. <laughs> Remember this week, don't be a part of your own problem. Ciao for now. <laughs>